Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So, just so y'all don't know, we're filming on location in uh, Honolulu, Hawaii. Am I saying that correct, Caden? Uh, yeah, that's absolutely right, Chris. One of the damn islands, bud. I've been so confused ever since we got here. We're, we're in the damn Hawaii, bud. I saw Magna P.I. and a red Ferrari just go by about 15 damn minutes ago. Mustache was flapping in the wind. So, you know, we're dressed in costume just to blend in with the locals. So, welcome back to the show. How's it going, Caden? I'm doing pretty well, man. Tomorrow is my favorite day of the year. Happy Independence, everybody. That's right. We are celebrating our independence with a good old Russian firearm. You can't get no better than that, guys. But, uh, but anyway... Happy Independence. Hope everybody has a safe and wonderful 4th of July this year. Try not to blow your fingers off. I already lost one from last year. Yeah. Yeah. Don't blow your fingers off. Don't be shooting bottle rockets at your neighbor's dog or your neighbor's wife. That's not cool. They do prosecute for that. Mm -hmm. they, they can get the upset over that sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Neighbors don't like it when you shoot bottle rockets at their pets. Yeah, if uh, or if their get, wives, if they get tired of you shooting fireworks, you'll start shooting your gun up in the air because they didn't mention that. Yeehaw! <laughs> so, Caden, what we got here today? This is a Mosinagant, Chris. This is how we're going to celebrate Independence Day. Uh, you may think with Russian Day. freedom. Yeah, American Day, uh, Independence Day, Fourth of July. You would think, you know, what are you doing with a Russian gun? Well, the American part was buying this. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you used Benjamins, <laughs> good old American Benjamins, to buy this. But, uh, this is my rifle right here. This is a Mosin-Nagant M9130. Uh, if you're over in Russia, you might call this Mosin's rifle. You might call it the three-line rifle. You might call it rifle 1891. I've, I've saw a bunch of stuff on it. But uh, this is a, a fundamentally Russian rifle. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the design of it. It was designed in the late 19th century. By two guys, uh, they were named Sergei Mosin and Leon Nagant. I'm going to throw up some pictures of those old fellows here. But uh, they developed this in the, the late 19th century, and they designed this because they were getting their butts kicked in the Russo-Turkish War uh, that was from 1877 to 1878. And so the Russians only had single-shot rifles, whereas the Turks, they had a Winchester, the, the repeating rifles. I think it's a Winchester 1866. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So uh, the, the Turks, they had uh, the Ottomans, I guess. Uh, they had significantly more uh, rate of fire just because they had that repeating carbine as compared to a single-shot rifle. And so they ended up with this right here. Yeah. This is the, uh, was originally designed in 1891, and it was later improved in 1930. They made a few modifications to that, which we'll talk about. The, uh, so this is the M9130. This is the full-length rifle version. They made several other versions. Uh, one is like a Top 38. It's a shorter carbine. One is a Top uh, 44. They make several other versions as well. Like one is the Chinese version. I think they call it like a Top 53 maybe. I'm, I'm sure I'll put a picture of it up here. Did they sell like the the blueprints or sell the guns to China? And it's kind of like the SK deal. Did they the China end up end up getting hold of the patent and start producing these themselves? Yep, same exact way. Okay, uh -huh. so produced under license. Um, so these were adopted by the Russian Empire in 1891 and used in pretty much every single war since. I'm going to throw up a graphic here or, or there about all the wars this thing was used in, and it's probably going to scroll for a minute or a minute and a half. It, it's been, been used in every war since. It was developed. Uh, there were a ton of these things created. If you uh, were to do some research online, it'll probably say that this is the second most produced rifle of all time, right behind the AK series, like an AK, uh, AKM, AK-47. And so because, you know, it was the adopted Soviet Red Army rifle, their service rifle, there were so many of these created that at one time they were really cheap. Uh, I'm not old enough to remember it. Chris is that these, these things used to be able to, you used to be able to buy a crate of these and uh, 80 bucks a pop for the rifles. Yeah, I remember back in the day, which I'm sure you could still find these in gun shops and gun shows, but I remember back in the day, heck, you couldn't go to a country gas station what they didn't have three or four of them hanging up on the wall for sale. And all the gun shows, gun stores had these, you know, they, they would just pretty much put these things in barrels. And, uh, you know, you just pick out the one you like and, you know, gun stores was covered up with these gun shows, you know, back in the day, you know, every vendor there 
had a selection of uh, Mosin Nagants for, for you to choose from, and they was, you could pick them up for nothing. They was dirt cheap. So I remember those days, and I'm, and I'm not really that old, but I do clearly remember that. Yeah, it's funny you should mention that. I actually got this one at a gun show years and years ago. Was it in a barrel? <laughs> no, it was. Uh, I wasn't old enough to experience those times when you could buy them for. Oh yeah, they was like you know like sticks of firewood. Just you know <laughs> they put them put them in a bundle and hey, pick out the one you want, kid. Give me ten bucks. <laughs> well, maybe not ten bucks, but you know fifty, sixty, seventy bucks. Seventy bucks, you're gonna get like the creme de la creme. You're gonna get a super nice example of a nagat for you know 70 bucks back in the day you know back you know 20 25 years ago 70 bucks is going to carry you a long way to mother russia hmm. i bought this uh ralph what a gun show i think i was just of age i think i had just turned 18 if i remember correctly and i think i paid 350 dollars for this one which was is pretty reasonable and they're actually going i actually went to another gun show this past weekend caden and i saw very few of these there and they was going for three fifty, four hundred bucks now. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess the world the world has been introduced to people sporterizing these and changing out the stock and stuff like that. So now, you know, it's the new they're still the cheap gun that we had back then, but that, you know, seventy, sixty, seventy bucks is no longer here here nor there. Now it's, you know, three, four, five hundred bucks and put a different chassis on it and stuff, then you know, then they're an American sniper or something. Mm -hmm. So but uh, yeah, I was really happy to get this one for the price that I did at the time. Um, it's a gorgeous gun. I was happy to pay. It was a little bit more than market rate was at the time for these things. I think they were going for like two fifty, three hundred at the time I bought it. Yeah. Um, I think I paid about three fifty for it, which I was okay with because this is a. Uh, I'm lucky enough to have a 1943 model. Uh, this is a, a inner war, uh, not an inner war, but a mid war gun. And it has a really nice bore in it, and I've tried to keep it that way. Um, tried to not shoot corrosive ammo which is hard to do because a lot of the 7.62 by 54R. That's another thing. This rifle is cham chambered in uh, 7.62 by 54R. The R stands for rimmed uh, or Russian. P people also say that 7.62 by 54R. I call it R Russian. Yeah, some people say the R is for Russian. I think it's for rimmed, but it, it's kind of colloquial. Um, but I, I was happy to buy this one. It's a really nice rifle in, uh, in good condition. Yeah. So let's and talk a little bit more about it. Uh, it's got a five-round internal magazine that you load by opening the bolt and pressing the rounds down in. Um, it is stripper clip compatible. I have uh, bought some stripper clips for it before, and I don't know if they're just a little bit out of tolerance, but they would not work in it. I don't have any of the original uh, you no know, 1940s model designed for this gun. I don't have any of those. I'm not lucky enough to have those. But that's okay. One uh, major point, I really like talking about this with this gun. The safety on a Mosin Nagant um, is actually not so safe by modern standards. So let me pick it up here. Maybe I can show it on camera a little bit better. <clears throat> so the safety on this rifle uh, is used by pulling on this handle that's on the bolt. It's at the rear of the gun back here. And you pull it and you push it over to the side. See how it's over on this side now? Whenever you go to take it off safety, if you have a round chambered, if you go to take it off safety and you have it pulled back like this under spring tension and you drop it, that can actually fire the gun. It'll uh, launch the firing pin into the primer and down she goes. And so I, I bet there's been a bunch of guys that have been shot in the back by so, this. So what do you think? So you think there's probably a lot of comrades back in the day that's <laughs> probably got some uh, bullet wounds, you know, because their comrade had uh, slippery fingers? Yeah, I, I would guarantee it. Of course, they did that anyway because they wouldn't let them run backwards. So. Yeah, yeah, they they couldn't run backwards, so they had no choice but to shoot their their uh, buddy up in front of them. So, uh, <laughs> what it be? What it would be like to have been a Russia back in those days? I guess, <laughs> or Russian. But uh, that's enough about the history and design. Uh, I'm not going to go into something super in depth here. This is not. Can a, we go into shooting? Yeah, we can go into the shooting. Let's talk about before we go into the shooting. Let's talk about pop culture. I want to talk about all the things this uh, movie oh, has been Oh, my in. goodness. You cannot <laughs> watch a a old foreign war movie, which I really love WW2 history, history movies. Heck, even on the History Channel, you know, now, for the last several years, they got into WW2 in color, you know, showing some footage of the World War II, you know, colorized. And you can't watch none of that without seeing this champion of... Uh, of the firearm industry in there somewhere 
it's there. I'll, you know, it's just, it's like the collation of cloth and the means of, it is very recognizable. It's been used throughout, uh, in pop culture in movies, Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even if, uh, somebody who's not into guns, uh, you know, doesn't really care for them, doesn't own any, doesn't research them. You can show this rifle to somebody and there's a chance that just from the movies and video games they've seen that they can say, oh yeah, that's the Russian one. That's the Soviet one from World War Jude II. Jude Law, baby. Jude Law. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is the enemy of the gate gun, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is the gun for enemy of the gates. Of course, and, you have the sniper variant. And people in their thirties, you know, if they see this gun and they know what this is, you know, immediately they're going to go to. That's that Jude Law gun. That is the gun from Enemy at the Gate. Yep. That's actually why I bought this gun. I absolutely love that movie. I, I have watched it probably a hundred times. Yeah. He kind of he kind of looks like Jude Law just a little bit anyway. So that probably made you feel uh, more like a like a superhero uh, shooting Nazis and whatnot. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so uh, this this movie was used in obviously Enemy at the Gates. It was used in the the Daniel Craig movie Defiance. You remember that one? I remember that. That was actually. I saw that movie not too long. I didn't see it in theaters, but it, you know, it was a fairly fresh movie when I saw it years ago. And that was actually, that was actually a really good movie. I'm not, I can't compare it with the enemy at the gate because it didn't have a, a heap and helping of the old action, but it was a really good film. If you're into the WW2, uh, two stuff, I mean, it, it, it was, it was, it was done really well mm -hmm. even to have, you know, James, the blonde James Bond in it. It was a good film. Yeah. It's about uh, a group. Got a good of, story. It is. It's, it's really good. It's about a group of uh, Polish Jews who have formed a militia. I guess you would call them partisans back then. Partisans. And I was cheering for the Polish people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was a great movie. I, I really like that movie. I think Daniel Craig does a really good job in whatever he's in. Oh yeah. He's a do all. Yeah. Uh, he, everything he's in uh, that I've seen, you know, he's really good. But anyway, uh, this has also been in a ton of video games. Uh, if you've played a World War II video game, you have seen this rifle before. It's been in every World War II Call of Duty, every Medal of Honor game. Was it in Black Ops? Uh, Maybe not. No, I don't think it was in Black Ops. It was in the precursor to Black Ops. Oh, okay. World yeah, that's, War. Yeah, I don't, that's that's before I really got into my serious gaming. <laughs> but uh, it was in uh, the, the, the World War II Battlefield. I think it was also in the World War I Battlefield. Um, don't know that one. No, that, that's if it don't have zombies, I didn't play it. So, <laughs> be, be honest. The, you can see this thing in Escape from Tarkov, uh, Sniper Elite, the Red Orchestra series. Uh, it's in DayZ. It's in Stalker. It's in the Metro series. Pretty much uh, any game that takes place either in the time period of like 1900 to 1950, or if it's just set in Eastern Europe or in Russia in general, then you're going to see this gun. Can we now talk about my experience shooting this? Go ahead, Chris. So I kind of feel like if you have have one of these now or have had one in the past, to me, this is a love-hate relationship because Caden's going to put up sh some shooting footage if he didn't lose it. If we, you still have the footage where we were shooting this? Yep. We shot this a couple of weeks ago whenever we had more time. And our apologies... I've been super busy doing the car, doing some farming stuff. I've been run ragged, guys. But anyway, Caden's going to throw up some footage of when we shot this a few weeks ago. And I have shot these in the past, and I didn't mind them. It wouldn't be my go-to gun if, like, it hits the fan and stuff like that. But I was kind of struggling when I shot Caden's gun. I don't know if he cursed me or what, but when I was cycling that boat <laughs> in between shots, I had to treat it like an ex-wife. I mean, it was awful. <laughs> and and that could have been me that I may just be out of practice with uh, shooting my Nazi killing rifle here. But it's just I, I struggled in that video and shooting this gun. It's like I wasn't putting enough meat and potatoes in the elbow when I was working that boat. So I kind of struggle. And then Caden gets up there and shoots it. Like he's Jude damn law. <laughs> that's, that's all I can say. So, but Caden, I know he's a whole lot younger than me, but I think Caden has a lot more practice at shooting the, the Mosin Nagant than what I do. I'm just, they're not bad guns. They're actually great guns. They was great. They was awesome guns for 70 bucks, but even probably for what you're going to pay for them. Now, if you find one a little bit cheaper, they're a fantastic rifle, but you have to 
you have to be uh, serious about shooting in a gaunt. And I was I was off my game that day, and I guess I wasn't <laughs> serious about shooting it. Yeah, you. It uh, almost shot. It almost was was shooting me. So it it kind of <laughs> had me under control. But I mean, the gun's fine. It's a, it's a great gun. These rifles, you've got to treat the bolt with some hatred. You got to. Yeah, that's that's what I was going to say. <laughs> you've got to you've got to operate it like you're mad at the world. That's all I can say. Hey, hey, they're uh, what I call them. What I go the the Russians, the comrade, the comrades. They're always mad at everybody anyway. So <laughs> you really have to have to build up your inner hatred of everything living to operate this gun efficiently. A lot of these guns are uh, a lot of these guns are shot out because people have shot a couple hundred rounds of corrosive ammo through. <laughs> <laughs> and uh the hard steel you nasty the boards yeah, we'll shoot you up. takes the ice <laughs> uh, a lot of these are shot out of hell sorry guys you're great <laughs> a lot of these are uh shot out the the bore is shot out on them they're not very accurate this one is a very accurate rifle if i was a hunter then i would probably use this as a deer gun um it it shoots really well it's it's 90% rifle and 10% flamethrower. <laughs> if you guys have, if you guys, you youngsters out there that's watching this, if you've never shot a Mosin Nagant, there's 10% of flame coming at the, at the end of this gun. So it's got some flame, uh, flamethrower heritage somewhere in it. It's like a, it's like a 308, but a touch bigger. I oh. mean, it's just like three millimeters longer case. Yeah, it's 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 a fun gun to shoot. I yeah. promise you, it is. It's great if you if all you know about these guns is what you read from forums online. If you're one of those guys, you never actually shot one of these things, which is okay. Then uh, you might read about the recoil, and some people say that the recoil is unmanageable. <clears throat> That's not true. It's a full power rifle cartridge. Chris, what do you think about people that say this gun is hard to shoot? I'd let my I would let my daughter shoot it. I mean, if they have trouble shooting this gun, they just probably don't need to be shooting now it's a heavy rifle i mean i could see like yeah maybe the a weight of it kind of buffers or something but. yeah the weight of the rifle itself kind of buffers that but it does have a little bit of a little bit of heave hole to it in your shoulder when you're shooting it so mm -hmm. you can feel it yeah you can you can feel it a lot of people choose to put rubber butt pads and stuff like that i won't have that just because i don't want that on my rifle i want to keep it original what about an aftermarket chassis like a uh, some kind of poly or fiberglass uh sniper chassis would you do that with your gun no, Chris. I wouldn't. I take back the question. <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna put a Tasco three by nine or no? I'm not gonna drill the drill drill the receiver out and put some cheap forty dollars scope on it off Amazon. <laughs> this would break your forty dollars scope, is all I'm saying. <laughs> but uh, it, it's 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 very cool gun. It shoots well. It would. I would like to. I'd like to have some range time with one of the the carbine models, the shorter versions. I think that'd be pretty cool. That would be great. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe somebody around here's got one. They'll let us uh, do a video with. That would be awesome. Heck yeah! <laughs> and um, before I forget, I won't get off topic for one second. So I went to the gun show this this past weekend in Elizabethan, Tennessee, to the National Guard Armory. I walked around the entire gun show passing out my business cards, you know, telling people, hey, I do YouTube, subscribe, love you, mean it, all that stuff. And I actually, when I left there, by the time I got home, I had a few more subscribers. Oh, yeah? Yeah. How many are you talking? Oh, I got four subscribers out of it, but, you know, the rest of them is going to come on later. That's a, a four subscribers. That's a 1% increase for us. You know that? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's quick on the draw. You're right. So I I spent, and it was actually only nine bucks for me to get in. So I spent nine bucks plus a little bit of gas, and I increased my my YouTube channel by one percent. And but the reason I'm talking about this is I had a lot of fun just walking around with no intention, which I did end up buying something. But we'll cover that in a upcoming video. But uh, I think I'm going to start hitting some more gun shows and walking around and probably going to start doing some footage. It's funny you should say that because uh, like two weeks ago, didn't we make a video trashing gun shows? Talking about how much we hated them and how we never go to If them. you've ever said something and like the next day you end up having to eat some crow, you might be related to us. But yeah, I mean, we was bashing. Well, and we wasn't bashing gun shows. We was actually being honest. What we was talking about a couple of weeks ago is that was really geared for the people that's never been. They're thinking, hey, I want to go to the gun show and I want to get something. I want to steal something. I want to get something, you know, cheap. That ain't happening. That ain't happening. That ain't happening. 
Don't get me wrong, they had some beautiful stuff. They actually had probably a lot nicer stuff there than what they did at that larger gun show I went to maybe a month ago. I mean, they had some really rock-solid firearms there, some beautiful firearms. But the price, you know, the price, you know, just wasn't there. But I did buy some things, and I'm not, I'll am not. i cover that in a later I'll cover that in a later video, and actually, that guy that I bought the uh, those things from, he subscribed, and if you see this video, thanks for cutting me a deal on what I bought off you, and if you're watching this and wondering if it's you, it is, because I only bought from one person up there. <laughs> I was kind of being cheap. I, I, you know, I went with so much money, and I didn't want to lose all that money before I got back home. Oh, it's easy to do at a gun show, too. Really easy to do, but... Uh, keep watching we're gonna do some gun show stuff in the future i feel it coming as long as they don't start kicking me out because like i said i walked around this entire gun show i had my business card stuck out and i'd reach on my business card and i would start looking at their stuff so can you I, film it uh, can you film it gun shows so people get mad about that you mighty right it doesn't matter if they get mad at that we're gonna do it anyway I'll well it. i'm gonna do it are you <laughs> i'll do it i don't care. i'm gonna do it like I said, maybe not to reflect any prices because don't want to get in to try to sell someone else's gun for them. If you're going to buy a gun, buy it from me. Uh, but they were some beautiful pieces of uh, pieces of history up there. They was they were some really nice firearms up there. And people by now should know I really like the older stuff. Caden does too. They were some nice uh, pieces of history up there. Uh, beautiful, some beautiful guns and. If I'd been a, a lottery winner and had tons of money, I would have come home with a couple old truckloads of firearms. So, <laughs> but anyway, didn't mean to get off topic. That's just to let you guys know well, what's coming up a little bit later this year. But uh, let's get back to this trash can gun. What is it you called it? And he <laughs> beats me up. He hates when I kind of throw off on it, but it's all in fun because really, these are really good firearms. If you can, if you've only got so much money and you find one of these and you could get it at a deal, don't be afraid to take a chance on it because you, I mean. Now that's if you're into like historical guns, military surplus guns. If you just want a bolt rifle, you shouldn't be buying this thing. If you want something just to shoot deer with then go buy you a Ruger American. Buy I remember growing up. I remember uh, this older guy that I knew growing up. He, he hunted everything with this. He deer hunted and. You know, he was just a really good shot with it, and that was his deer hunting rifle. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, it'd be a great rifle for that, but, uh, you know, there's no reason to buy one of these if you just want to hunt with it. No. It's and, a great military. Yeah, and this, this wouldn't be something to protect your domicile. I mean, you could, but I wouldn't. Yeah. But it's just a great nostalgia piece of, uh, you know, WW2, WW1 history. So. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, that's really about all I got for the gun. Uh, I think we're all square talking about it. Uh, again, happy 4th of July. Happy Independence Day. Happy uh, God of bless July. America. God bless America, everybody. And thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button. Tell your neighbors. Uh, get them in a figure four, uh, figure four wrestling move or whatever that is. Headlock them. Whatever you got to do. Get your neighbors subscribing. Heck, get your kids subscribing. We're trying to keep it clean <laughs> on this channel. Get your dog channel. subscribing. <laughs> get your dogs. Just like you do on your taxes every year. Sign your, <laughs> sign your dogs up. But anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. All right, ready when you are. What do you think? Got a little bit of punch to it. Yeah. <laughs> One Nazi. <laughs> Two Nazi. Three Nazi and four. <laughs> yeah, I'll shoot three. Nazis had their gas chamber. We got the Mosin again. Let it rip, tater chip. Oh no, I lost the target. <laughs> I'll shoot something else. Is 
to see all the stuff that through. It hit me right here on the chest. <laughs> Damn you, you Nazi. Take that. <laughs> Man, I love this thing. Yeah. Hey, it's pretty fun. What'd you say about my <laughs> Jew, buddy? <laughs> Damn Nazi bastards. <laughs> <laughs> we on the stopper roll on you, bud. Call off the war, bud. <laughs> 